Pavel Tatsulin has been hailed as the king of modern kettlebell training. He put kettlebells in the West on the map and he was responsible for one of the biggest revolutions in kettlebell history. In this video, I'm going to share five kettlebell lessons I have learned from the master who helped shape the kettlebell landscape we see today. Grüezi miteinander, Gregory von Lebestag hier. In a fairly recent video, Pavel Tatsulin talked about kettlebell training for BJJ and grapplers. This recent video from Pavel was sent to me by a subscriber and it's over 45 minutes long. So I went ahead and compartmentalized everything that Pavel said in his recent video into five big kettlebell lessons. Lesson number one, understand GPP and SPP. Lesson number two, 10 reasons to use kettlebells. Lesson number three, understanding and applying the different breathing techniques. Lesson number four, engaging in proper kettlebell safety. And lesson number five, kettlebell lifting basics. In some instances, I will provide you with my personal insights and opinions. What is the difference between GPP and SPP? GPP means general physical preparation and SPP means special physical preparation or specific physical preparation. Now, GPP includes exercises that have a high carryover to your sport, for example, barbell squats or kettlebell swings. Now, when we talk about SPP, we have to put it in two categories. SPP1 is the sport-specific performance. If you're a basketball player, for example, you practice free throws. Now, SPP2 is highly specific sports performance, and that's only for elite athletes. And Pavel mentioned the example of a BJJ practitioner of a high-level athlete that engages in explosive lunges for takedowns with a rubber band for resistance. Let's talk about the reasons why you should use kettlebells and Pavel mentioned 10. Reason number one is you have unparalleled efficiency. The amount of work that you can do with kettlebells is so efficient because you can do it all at once. You engage in strength training, conditioning, it's soft for your joints. The efficiency is just unmatched. Number two, you will develop strength, power and condition simultaneously at the same time if you engage in powerlifting for example you engage in high intensity strength training so it's all about focus on strength yet endurance may be left out when you focus on marathon running for example you're into high endurance training and then you miss out on strength so kettlebells give you both at the same time reason number three you build so-called all-terrain strength i like this description because he says the kettlebell loads you from all angles, especially when you work with the ballistics. When we talk about the planes of motion, I would say that maybe, in my opinion, one plane is missing, and that is the frontal plane. That's why I believe maybe club bells are a good addition, or you engage in some specific kettlebell exercises that respect the frontal plane as well. Reason number four, you have a steep learning curve. So kettlebells are easier to learn than, for example, barbells. I believe that is true to some extent. When you engage in kettlebell sport, the learning curve may be intensified and you hit a lot more plateaus because it's a lot more technical and there's more nuances to it. Reason number five, it's all about hips and grips and he says this is specific for combat sports because when you work with kettlebells, a lot of the focus is on your hips as well as on your grip depending on the exercise you want to choose. Reason number six, he says you you don't have to live in your sports posture. When you engage in kettlebell training, you experience some postural correction. That's why I believe it's always important to engage in exercises that contradict your postural imbalances that you maybe get from your sport. Reason number seven, when you work with kettlebells, you engage in a cycle of tension and relaxation. And that's especially true when you engage in kettlebell sport, because when you work for longer sets of time, you have to understand how to relax your muscle. And Fitbrit calls this earn your way to relaxation. But you also have to understand how to engage with tension. And Steve Carter calls it the so-called power switch concept. This interplay between extreme Extreme relaxation and extreme tension is something that you need especially in combat sports. Reason number eight, you build resilience. 
and he says you bulletproof your joints. Depending on the exercises you choose, the kettlebell is very specific and works a lot of your bones, especially when you go, for example, into an overhead soft fixation where you have to stand straight and keep the weight inside your center of mass and make sure that you use your structure as additional support. That's something that also happens in the clean or the so-called rack rest position. Number nine, kettlebells are ergonomic perfection. Now, I like this concept because when you clean two heavy dumbbells, you don't have a lot of space. It gets hard to clean them. When you clean heavy weights on the barbell, it may be hard on your wrist. So with the kettlebell, when you go into a proper hand insertion, you have a great ergonomic feeling that is very soft on your joints. Reason number 10, you can replace an entire gym. You don't need anything else but a few kettlebells. Pavel says this, and I say this as well, this doesn't mean that the equipment that you have in the gym is useless. It just means that you can work with a very efficient tool that saves you a lot of time, money, and space. Now let's talk about breathing. This is a very interesting field. Imagine your brain is like the music player. Your muscle are your loudspeakers. Internal pressure is the amplifier or the volume control. Now the first thing that he talks about is power breathing. What power breathing does is you will develop abdominal strength. You'll understand how to ratchet the tension. You have to keep the pressure below your armpits, don't blow up your head, and you have to understand how to engage in the kime. Increasing strength, especially when we work with a heavy kettlebell swing, where the weight wants to pull you off balance or away from your center of mass, and then your spine experiences shear forces that you have to engineer out. Additionally, he talks about the concept of breathing behind the shield, and I believe this is somewhat a form of Divalsalva maneuver where you keep the air in and then you keep the tension in your body to increase that pressure to add additional stability, especially for your spine. And he coins that perfect expression. He says, the Valsalva maneuver or breathing behind the shield is an exhalation that hasn't happened. Another concept that he talks about is fractional breathing by Alexander Streltsov. Now, fractional breathing was designed for running and you can use it in an emergency situation or in between reps. And I actually tried this in yesterday's workout. So how it works is you have four mini inhales and then two exhales or one, depending on who you listen to. Alexander Streltsov talks about one exhale. Pavel also says one to two exhales. Now what these mini inhales do is they give time for the oxygen to get into your lungs and into the blood, while at the same time blasting out the carbon dioxide. So what you essentially do is you increase the oxygen that your blood can take up and your lungs can take up, so you will maybe recover faster. And when I tried it in the workout, I didn't feel an immediate relief, like in the normal way that I breathe, but maybe I just need some more practice and see if I see a difference over time. Another interesting concept that he talked about was Darth Vader breathing. Now, Darth Vader breathing sounds like this. <laughs> it sounds like, Luke, I am your father. <laughs> Pavel coins this as a so-called low-grade power breathing. So you exhale through partially constricted vocal cords. So what this does is it slows down the airflow in exhalation. And this also may improve recovery. And I tried this as well in yesterday's workout. And like I mentioned, I maybe need more practice and maybe do it for a longer time to feel a difference. Now, what I found in my research was an RCT, a randomized controlled trial study on dogs. And what they said was the following. In conclusion, our randomized controlled trial provided proof of the efficacy of prolonged slow expiration and assisted cough and the management of respiratory distress in dogs. Another thing that he talks about is the so-called talk test. He says, don't lift faster than you can talk. I believe in this concept, yet I see it from a different angle when we talk about kettlebell sport, for example, where you have to do a 10 minute set of a snatch. So you will feel tired, but you still have to keep going. So that way you have to improve your technique, improve your breathing, 
and still keep punching. And most of the time, you won't be able to talk anymore, but you're still able to keep good form and keep going. Now, you're probably also missing out on these so-called anaerobic benefits, and there's a host of them if you always put the kettlebell down, stop and relax before you engage with it again. And maybe sometimes you're missing out on the fun to engage in fight night until you reach the limit to see how far you can go as long as you do it safely. Doing this safely means to me that you engage in proper technique you know your body and you always leave some energy in the tank even if you go into a so-called orange reddish zone and then he talks about kettlebell safety now the first thing that he mentions is that you need a safe space the reason why you need a safe space is because you don't want to hurt yourself your pet or other people what you also need is some good flooring some rubberized mats and he even mentions that those jiu-jitsu mats are not perfect for kettlebells because if you lift a heavy kettlebell you want to give it the freedom to fully drop on the floor that's why he says rubberized mats on gym floors work best you got to treat the kettlebell like it's always loaded even the lightest ones and he mentions an example of serious power lifters who hurt themselves not in the one rep max set but in the warm-up another thing that he talks about is the so-called five stop signs you stop if rep speed diminishes you stop if your tempo drops you stop if your technique changes or breaks down your rate of perceived exertion goes above eight you want to save those nines and tens for your sport or in our case for fight night if you want to go heavy and go all in you stop if you're gasping for air because your body will always prioritize quantity over quality and if you engage in more reps you probably engage in sloppy technique while i do agree with these aspects i also believe you can work according to the law of exercise the law of exercise means if you continuously engage in an exercise you will improve your technique over time so here's where i differ a little bit i do see the value of these stop signs but sometimes i believe it's cool if you keep going to improve technique and see if your technique is safe if you have a christmas tree lighting up in here and then your automated systems have to take over the last portion that he talks about is you want to train barefoot and you want to train on a flat surface the reason why you want to do it is you want to have improved proprioception proprioception is the idea of your body or the signals of your feet that are shooting up to your brain telling your body what the surface is like unstable surfaces will inhibit power output and because of this unstable surfaces won't let you generate more strength or power so the risk of injury goes up and you won't be able to build strong feet and another thing that happens if you work on unstable surfaces you will build poor movement patterns you always want to make sure that the surface is flat so you can engage in barefoot training or what we like to do is we choose the right shoes that are flat that have flat heels so we can engage in weight training or kettlebell training properly thank you for watching if you enjoyed the video like it consider subscribing if you want to see more kettlebell content and if you're looking for a kettlebell program that builds you up from a beginner to a slowly advanced trainee in the course of about three months and you maybe want to combine it with some easy to follow nutrition coaching because maybe you want to lose weight or you want to get in shape then check out 90 days of kettlebells you find the link in the description 14 day free trial included